Jones, absent. Council Annette, present. Present. Council Triton, absent. I'm stepping in for Council Triton. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Girls Incorporated, uh, Cassandra Foley and Joyce uh, Redford. Redford. And uh, young ladies? Uh, Anna Martinez and Carolyn Frias. Okay, if you want to go ahead and
So um, in the stores, if you were to go in after you see the broad spectrum of stores, you go in and you you can see all the tobacco products that are on display. And yeah. um, the last tactic is price. Which product do you think is cheaper? So all this is also in your hand. Chapstick is actually more expensive than this bag, the pack of cigars here. And here, a salmon eye to is more expensive than that. In magazine, they're very low price. And um, a pack of gum, which I'm drinking right now, <laughs> is actually more expensive than a black mouth, which is a good example because if they can afford a gum, they can clearly afford it. Price is the most important tactic because you have this, which is nine dollars, which a kid, a teenager is going to have a hard time getting nine dollars. But twenty-five cents, they could easily get that. Everybody has that junk drawer in their house that they just throw everything in. I'm sure they can find twenty-five cents in there. So um, the local pricing survey of the by the girls in chapter by us. Collected views on local pricing and packaging of blunt scars, tip scars, and cigarettes. And um, out of this um, survey, we conducted um, brief, we conducted brief person on the street surveys from um, 117 adults in England. And findings that we found interesting were 90% um, of the youth surveyed that the average high school so we could easily afford these tobacco cards, just like we said before, 25 cent versus nine dollars. And smokers and youth are more likely than non-smokers and adults to have noticed these cheap products in stores. This graph shows you that um, as other tobacco products, which, which is the um, gold line, these are going up, while cigarettes and cigarette packs are going down. It's just illustrating that we spend so much time on cigarettes and we're forgetting about other tobacco products. So we've said before, <laughs> Keep that pattern going. Price is really important. Singles or mini packs are cheapest products. Dissolvables and chews are still much less expensive than cigarettes, and cheap products encourage impulse buys. So you can support local policy actions such as ban the sale of tobacco in pharmacies. This will decrease the availability. This already passed in 63 Massachusetts communities. And they cap the number of tobacco licenses this was passed in Actually, probably about like 10 communities. We don't have that in the place. So we're kind of focusing on pharmacies, if you, you noticed from the previous slide. And well, a CBS purpose statement. Our purpose is helping people on their path to better health. 63 communities in the state of Massachusetts have banned the sale of tobacco in pharmacies. This has not prevented pharmacies from opening in towns and cities who have a ban. Who's want to emphasize this is they're saying that they're helping people on their path to better health while they're selling tobacco in their pharmacies. It's kind of contradictory. So why do the license capping? Lynn currently has 151 tobacco licenses. This ratio roughly is one store per 436 adult move, one store store per 167 minors. There is currently no limit on how many tobacco licenses are given out in the city. And Lynn's number of tobacco permits is 41 percent higher than the state's average. Well, I want to I want to thank you, Carolyn and Anna, for that uh, eye-opening presentation. I think that um, as public officials, it is we need to act, and this is a problem. And. It's very unfortunate that you know we live in a capitalistic society where these big industries are, are earmarking young people for profit, and, and we need to take steps. This shouldn't be happening. Um, I want to thank you for doing this, and uh, I, I want to commend you for your efforts and uh, encourage you to continue to to do these things because it's, it's eye-opening. The community needs to hear these things. So thank you for spending this person. Go ahead, go ahead. Now we're going to do 
Who yes. wants to make sure she's We do. So uh, just, the girls in has done this presentation to the Board of Health as well. And I, actually, last month's meeting, the Board of Health is uh, in order to adopt regulations to be in pharmacy sales of tobacco and land. So that will be happening. And all of these other issues around packing and the Board of Health is looking at all of these issues. We have a large number of permits. We have, like they said, over 150 you know, of permits. So tracking those, creating a system that would actually be able to monitor who has a permit, who doesn't, when is one available, when is. So those are things that, you know, over time we're looking at developing, but we're certainly, yeah. Uh, so now, do we have to do it as a council, paying for the bans on the pharmacies, or can we do that with the board? We do that as a board of health regulation. We already have the tobacco access. Now, none of these products are supposed to be sold to minors to begin with. Right? Right. So, so um, the board of health already has uh, the youth access regulations and the tobacco regulations. So it's, it's certainly in the board of health uh, jurisdiction to be able to have these regulations. No, we are we're presenting it in here just because of public safety. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. 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 I'm sorry. Now, do we have a board to do things like they're doing the alcohol and the cigarettes? Do that? That's our program. And I have to say, the city um, effective uh, when Marion took over, we really, the Board of Health uh, really did a good job of implementing uh, suspensions along with those fines that are the state minimum. And it really has turned things around in terms of compliance. Um, unfortunately, they're still available to local kids because these merchants know who the neighborhood kids are. Um, we have responded to complaints even from the council that there are certain stores they're aware of. We go out, unfortunately, again, those are the local kids, but our numbers are decent. Our concern is that the density is a serious issue here in the city, and clearly from the master structure. Absolutely. And not to say, we don't want to, you know, the, the goal is not to cut anyone off the knee, it's just to say no more. And unlike a liquor permit, you have to be a United States citizen, you have to have a clean record, you can't own so many stores. Those things, it's not like a new concept. So um, just in terms of statewide, not just citywide, but statewide, there's a lot of communities, Saugus passed something, Salem passed something, for the same reason, just looking at it not becoming then the only business we attract of those selling those products. Um, and the other quick piece was, that wasn't directly mentioned, is there's these e-cigarettes, and it's something we can do immediately, and the Board of Health is addressing these. Um, they've become really prevalent. The industry has bought them, so you know that there's a market for this. And they're heavily marketed all over the state, but obviously with 151 outlets, they're everywhere. They're not FDA approved. And the Board of Health is at least, we're not saying you can't buy them, but at least make them age restricted so that only adults are making those decisions for themselves. Because, you know, they're not FDA approved, we don't know what's in them. Let adults make those decisions for themselves, but not the young people. And that is going through the Board of Health, that's on the table right now. So this is Okay. Thank you, through you to the chair. I just want to again commend all of you ladies for all the hard work you do. Um, you really should receive all the credit for all the anti-tobacco initiatives that have been placed in this city in the last several years because but for your presentations, a lot of this information just doesn't come up every day um, before the council. Uh, you should be proud of yourselves. I noticed that in the last three years, it seems that the last three years really we've seen a lot of the Board of Health put these bans in place, but for uh, Boston Newton. Has something changed? Was it just momentum, or did the, the, the laws change in authorizing? Well, for example, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. No, they have historically had the authority to do reasonable health regulations, and these have fallen under that um, category. But also, for um, in terms of enforcement, you can have a board health agent who's in these places and you already have approved food permits. Not impossible, impossible to go through ordinance. But they've gone through boards of health because it's been the means of something they have historically done. So this just seems as though it's, it's very popular as of lately, which is a good thing. It's getting momentum. Have there been any challenges to any of the boards? For legal we challenges, have, we've had no challenges on across the state for the pharmacy ban. I will say, which is great. And the uh, cigar pricing, Boston went first as of February a year ago, and there's been no challenges to that. And we have, as a state, really done. I do diligence in sticking with the language and ensuring that the language is really level where encouraging communities not to do anything different because if there were ever a lawsuit, you want to be kind of amassed, especially with Boston, who is a legal team. Um, and what we found out, even locally, because Seattle and Sargis have both done this, is that uh, about 50% of the merchants have opted out of the very inexpensive, like 79, 25 cent cigars, 
and chosen if they're going to carry carry a pack of four or more. And then it's just market value. And the merchants really say, even when we've done myself, because I represent those communities, out they doing education, they're saying, this is actually a good thing, because that brings in a, a, you know, a group of kids at a certain time of night. We don't want it here. We don't want the problem. But they're not making those decisions independently. It's sort of coming, you know, top down from Board of Health or City Council or selecting at least being um, backing the, the initiatives of the Board of Health and the city and the community as a whole. So there haven't been any challenges as far as that's concerned. And the pharmacy thing has been great. We haven't even gotten a challenge from the pharmacies. They don't even come to the hearings. There's, the only opposition that's showed up at any hearing has been um, I can't think of the name right now, but they're a, a lobbyist firm for Philip Morris, and they have showed up just about every year and said nothing, just come to the hearing. But it's an I interesting know, thing. I know the license board can only give out so many liquor licenses, and it's not the same with the tobacco. No, and we have, that's what Marianne was saying. We're, we're aiming for that because that makes sense, especially in the city of the sludge. Um, but it's, it's a few things. First of all, it's education. I mean, we have more merchants in this community than any, almost the rest of our collaborative combined. So it's an education effort, along with just a, a not bookkeeping, what's the word, like system problem to ensure what's the best mechanism to ensure if we decide there's a cap, how do you ensure that we don't exceed it, we keep the ones open that we want to keep open. And the language has been tweaked so much that we're really never going to, if you sell your business to me, and part of the reason why I want to buy your business is because one thing is it has a tobacco permit. There's like language written by the lawyers in Boston, the sample language that we provide to you guys, that gives 60 days for that transfer, not of the permit, because uh, permits are non-transferable, but at least if ownership is transferred, within 60 days, if you go and apply for that, you'll get it for that address. So that we've really done a good job at the state level of providing the communities with good, solid language. Not to put these people out of business. That's not our goal. It's just to, you know, kind of quell the uptick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job.